Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I'm going to do my top 10 in terms of Blu-rays. And these are the ones I gravitate towards. So it's not a top 10 outright. It's not like these are the 10 best looking Blu-rays. It's the ones I tend to gravitate towards when I want to watch a movie. So basically what I'm watching at any given time. So we're going to start off with one that basically every Australian will stop and watch. And it's The Castle. I mean, you can't go much better in terms of Australian culture than The Castle. And people might say, but Crocodile Dundee, like, what about Crocodile Dundee? Well, it's not something I watch every other week, Crocodile Dundee. The castle is on Channel 9 and basically syndicated, syndicated TV commercial networks in Australia. This movie is always played and it's always on TV. It's always re-airing. And no matter when it's on, it always draws an audience because it's so culturally significant. I mean, Michael Caden is a legend. I've worked with Michael Caden in the past on a movie, which, which was called Last Cab of Darwin. But this is the one that really solidifies Australian cinema for me. This is one that is like, no matter where you are, you can always watch The Castle. And it's one of those great comedies about a man's home is his castle, you know. An airport wants to acquire his land, a compulsory acquisition, and he fights him. And it's based around that whole thing. So that's number one in this collection. This is number one of what I gravitate towards. I will usually watch that about three, four times a year, maybe even five times a year, you know, five times. <laughs> um, the next one's Castaway. Same thing, always on syndicated TV, but also I'll usually check out the Blu-ray a couple times a year, two, three times, because it's just so good. So overall, I'm probably watching it about three or four or five times a year between TV and this. And it's just so good. It's like, it's such a great movie. I mean, putting yourself into perspective, running away from society and basically living on an island, although the plane crashed, you can't really say you ran away from society. But, you know, this whole thing about like, castaway, what would you do in that situation? The plane's crashed, no one knows you're alive, no one knows you're on an island. What would you do in that situation? It gets your mind thinking and then it's just a really good movie overall. So that's going in this collection as well. Another one I really enjoy is Deep Cover. And this is a, I believe it's Criterion? Yeah, it's Criterion. So I imported this one, and I really love Deep Cover. It's one of those movies that really, um, it's maybe Lawrence Fishburne's, possibly his best movie outside of The Matrix. Like, he's had a lot of great movies throughout these. Don't get me wrong, Lawrence Fishburne is a tremendous actor. But Deep Cover is one of those movies that, like, I will watch it over and over and over. It's like New Jack City. Like, I haven't got New Jack City in my collection right now because it's, it's here. New Jack City is the Blu-ray. I've got it. But I haven't got it in the top 10 because it's something that I might watch once or twice a year. Whereas this, I watch constantly year after year, watch it again and again. This one's going number three. Number four is The Room. Now, you might say, that's a bit of an odd one. Isn't that meant to be a bad movie? It's so bad. It's good. It's like... You watch it for the cult significant of significance of this. And in fact, if I'm going to put this in here, I need to put Rocky Horror in here. But you know what? I'm going to make the switch. I'm going to do something. Even though, look, sorry, Time Always Own. I know you love, I, you sent me a card. I love you, man. But I mean, I have to go for another one because while I might watch this once or twice, maybe three times a year, there's one that I watch way more. And it is in the musical section. Where is my musical section? Because I've moved all this around and I can't remember where I put musicals. <laughs> Give me two seconds and I will find it. It is West End's musical. Here we go, right behind me. I should have known it was right behind me. So when we look for it, where is it here? It's, I know it's here somewhere, Rocky Horror. If you guys can see it, then let me know. Why does it go straight to Prince? Something is not adding up here. Why is it going directly to that? Anyways, Rocky Horror Picture Show is a great movie, if I can find it. I don't know where it is right now. It should have been there, but it's not obviously there. So I guess we're kind of stuck, guys. But yeah, why is Rocky Horror not in the musicals? It might be in the dramas. Give me two seconds, guys. I'm going to fix this, and I'm going to figure out where I've put it. Because it should be in the musical section. It is a really iconic musical. Where is Rocky Horror Picture Show? If you guys can see it, you can just point it out to me. You're probably looking at the screen saying, it's right there, Jamie. It's right there. Unless I've replaced it with a 4K. No, it hasn't come out in 4K. They should give Rocky Horror Picture Show a 4K. That's a movie that would actually benefit from a 4K if they do it right. And it would sell a ton of, ton of, ton of whatever. 
why am I not seeing anything in there? Why am I not seeing Rocky Horror? If you guys can just point it out, it would help me a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, where is the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Don't worry, I'm going to cut this together. I will cut it together and maybe I won't cut it together because I just found it. It's in the wrong section. Why did I put it under T? It should have been under R. Have I mixed this all up? It's going to go down here. It's going to go under QRS. This is what I mean. I like to look like. I like my collection in order because then if it's out of order, I can't find the thing. And that's the thing with collecting. You have to have organization. You have to have it in a way that you can find it. Obviously, this was out of place, so I couldn't find it where it was meant to be. Rocky Horror Picture Show. One of the most iconic movies of all time. Now, obviously, I've done a hot switch from The Room. I do watch Tommy Wiseau as well. I watch The Room once or twice, a couple, three times a year. But Rocky Horror, I'll watch that over and over and over again. Like, when I get on a run, I'll watch it again and again. It's one of those movies I keep coming back to. But yeah, Rocky Horror's gone in my collection. Frank and Furter has won this one. He's going to go on that collection. This is the top 10 Blu-rays that I would usually gravitate towards. So Rocky Horror is going to go above the room. Love you, Tommy Wiseau, but I will watch that maybe three times a year. Hang Em High is another one I watch a couple of times a year, maybe four or five times. Hang Em High is Clint Eastwood. Um, one of his better Westerns. Like, I mean, people would gravitate towards High Plains Drifter and like, you know, Good, Bad and the Ugly and all that. But Hang Em High is actually a really good one. It's got, I believe, is this the one with Dennis Hopper? Am I thinking correctly? No, it may not be, but um, yeah, it's a really, um, it's a really good movie overall. Like, it's one of those ones that I will keep gravitate towards again. Like, he is trying to seek vengeance. I think, yeah, actually, I think it is the one with Dennis Hopper. I know Dennis Hopper was in one of these uh, Clint Eastwood movies, but he was really young at the time. So, yeah, I think he's, I think it's that one. I don't think it's the other ones. I'm positive it's that one, but yeah, I watch this like two, three times a year. It's one of those movies that I keep gravitating towards, and we'll watch it once. Or a couple, three times, four year, times a year. Another one I'll gravitate and watch constantly and is Austin Powers. Now, as you see, I have two copies of Austin Powers. There is a difference. This copy that Umbrella released is the international version. It's the version that the US has. So if you're in the US, the Umbrella version is the version you're used to. It is the version that everyone else watches in America. It's the one that is mainly on digital now, and this is why I have choice. When I say when I say physical media and you have choice, this is what I mean. I'm not a big fan. This isn't the version I'm nostalgic about. This is not the version I grew up on. The Australian market was much into the international version, which is more on the UK version. And the differences are subtle, but I am a fan of Orange Sherbet. I'm a, sh I'm a fan of the henchmen families, and I don't know if they ever did an extended version in the US of that version, but it's all in the UK version. And that's why I have the UK, because this is the version I watch and gravitate towards. I do have the Umbrella release, but the Umbrella, uh, the Umbrella release has too much missing for me. It's not the version I'm nostalgic for. This is the version I'm, the version I'm nostalgic for. So for that, that's going as, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, number six in the collection. Number seven. I know it's getting a 4K release. Before anyone says anything, I know it's getting a 4K release. I'm trying to get it. <laughs> but it's number one mainly in this collection. I know I have access to all the movies. They're all in a nice little convenient box set, even though I would have preferred individuals. But yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one is so iconic. And yeah, Blu-ray, look, I will usually watch it between a number of formats, DVD, VHS, Blu-ray. I tend to put in the Blu-ray more or less. So it's a version that I will constantly watch and it's not perfect. The, four, the 4K I've heard has fixed some of the sound issues and some things that I would kind of want fixed. But in terms of what it looks like, it's pretty good. It's not great, but it does the job for when I want to watch A Nightmare on Elm Street. And Freddy is something that I remember watching as far back as like four years old and being terrified of him. And you can say what you will about 2 and 3 and all the other movies that came after. But Freddy was on a different level in that first movie. And especially when you're watching it on like a, a uh, blurry VHS tape and like, it made it more scary. So that's going in the collection, but only as number one. I'm not putting the, all, every single movie in there. Just number one. Good Will Hunting is another good movie as well. It's one I tend to watch like three or four times a year. It's so good. It's like Robin Williams, the dynamic between Robin Williams and even Matt Damon and 
you know, that's just works. It's just such a beautiful movie. And Matt Damon it really solidified Matt Damon as a serious actor and showed that Robin Williams wasn't just comedy. He could do serious acting. And, you know, there's so much about this film that I love. And I don't feel like I should tell you much about the film because if you haven't seen it, you have to watch Good Will Hunting. It's so, so good. Like, if you like Dead Poet Society, then you will absolutely love Good Will Hunting. So for that, it's going right in my collection. It's one of my favorites to watch. I'm going to save that one for last. Actually, do I want to say that one next? I'll say that one next because I want to save an Australian movie for last. But I will say Terminator 2. Now you might say, now Jamie, you have that on 4K over here. You have it on 4K somewhere. I've moved all the sections around. There it is, 4K. I don't like the 4K. It wasn't in my top 10 video for 4Ks for a reason. Because the Blu-ray is just so much better. I mean, Cameron did a lot of color grade changes to the 4K on version. He changed a lot of things. He changed a lot of... He did a lot of things like... He says it's correcting or modernizing or whatever he says it is. But it doesn't work for me. This version is more of what I learn, what I know, what I love about Terminator 2. And it's one of, I mean, if I have to tell you how many times I've watched Terminator throughout the years, it's probably around the same amount of, as like Titanic. I've just watched this over and over again from time to time. So for that, it's one of those movies I can constantly watch it, no matter if it's on TV or whatever, I can always watch that. It's Terminator 2. I will always stop to watch Terminator 2, unless it's 4K. I'm not a biggest fan of the 4K transfer. And I'm, I know I knock Cameron a lot, so I will say, if Jim Cameron ever was to hear what I have to say, I love his work. I was one of his massive fans at one point. But he just has to stop doing this to his films. Like, I mean, I know he's modernizing it. I know he's trying to bring it to a new audience. I know this. And I know the audience hates Green. I know the audience doesn't want certain things. But when it's so drastically changed, it hurts the film overall. And... I used to hate when Lucas did it. I used to hate when Spielberg tried to do it with E.T. And I am not a fan of when the 4K came out and it had a different color grade and things were waxy and all that. It just didn't work for me. But that's why I keep the Blu-ray version around. It's just the version for me to watch until maybe he'll do it in an 8K release, maybe fix it. I don't think... I think he'll use that master from now on, even if it goes 8K. So I'm keeping that around. And I know there's a Lionsgate one out there that's apparently better quality than this one. The Skynet Edition has notorious issues as well. But it's accessible. It's something I can get. And for that reason, it's in my collection already. It's the one I watch so much. And then the final movie of this, The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith. What can I say about this movie? Now, The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith is an Australian movie that I'm sure not a lot of people have heard of. It's something that is a bit more niched. I mean, when people think Australian cinema, they've obviously heard of like rabbit proof fence and like um samson and delilah and muriel's wedding and crocodile dundee you don't immediately think of the chan of jimmy blacksmith it's based on a true story so it really should be biopic it is based on a true story but it's one of those great indigenous movies i am indigenous australian and it's just one of those really good movies that you just you get into and you're like oh my god is this really happening like it gets you, it hooks you, and it's one of those movies that you just can't stop watching. And it's like, you will stop watching it, it'll end, and then you'll be like, okay, I'll put it away for a couple of weeks, and then you'll want to watch it again. It's just so good. But there's a reason I'm saving this for last, because it is so good that I'm going to end on it. If you haven't seen The Chant of Jimmy's Blacksmith, you need to see it. But that is number 10 in my collection of 11 Blu-rays overall, but 10 movies. Because obviously Austin Powers, there's two versions in there. I don't think we really need to have that that um, umbrella release because it is a thing. Umbrella, you've got to start putting dual releases on some of these things. If you're going to do a 4K of Austin Powers at some point, make sure you have the international version on these. And Umbrella is a really good company. I, I'm not going to knock Umbrella because they do really good work. And I love their restorations. They're doing a lot for Australian film. My little nitpicky part of it is that the Australian release of this should have had the international version, which is what Australia had when it came to cinemas. Has the US version, maybe they couldn't acquire the rights. But if they couldn't acquire the rights to the, for the version that came out in Australia, they probably shouldn't have put a Blu-ray out there. That said, it is nice to have the US release. But there. There's my top 10 Blu-rays. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed.